So after you receive your new EEPROM and you either received your Motes G1 adapter or purchased one yourself, you'll need to install the chip into the G1 in the correct orientation. So to install the G1, you want to be looking at the G1 in this orientation. So if you can read this, you know, left to right, you're in the right spot. Yours may have a zip socket instead of the regular dip socket, depending on what options you picked when you ordered it or what you requested when you ordered your chip. There's a notch to the left, and there's also writing on the chip that you'll want to be able to read when you're trying to install it into the G1. So when you go to install the chip into the G1, you may find that the pins are very slightly wider than the socket. Now that's normal. It's not a cause for alarm. What you're going to need to do is try to start one side and then apply a little bit of pressure to get the other side in. So you should be able to get something like this where all the pins are in their respective holes in the dip socket and then you apply light pressure it snaps into place. Just keep in mind that these pins are very very fragile. They're very soft and thin and they're easily breakable. So when, when you're in installing them you just need to keep that in mind. So once you have the chip installed Verify that the notch is facing to the left when holding the adapter in this position. You also want to make sure you have your factory memcal ready. Some people uh, prefer to remove this blue cover from the top. It's doable without it. And you also will need your ECM. This is a 1227-730 ECM, but the process is the same for the 165. But the 165 has this inspection slot horizontally, and they're a little smaller. Some people have a hard time getting the chip installed without removing the cover of the ECM, but that's pretty simple and not an overly complicated process. So for the purpose of this video, I went ahead and removed the blue cover from the Memcal. Now, this is just to help explain this. Basically, what you have here on the Memcal is the PROM, and then you have this resistor pack to the right, especially on the 91 and 92 cars with the integrated knock filtering. But basically, the PROM could be called your calibration. This is what stores your fuel tables, your ignition tables. The resistor pack and the ECM itself are what handle the logic to run the car. So what you're doing when you replace your chip with your updated calibration, whether it's a VATS delete or a custom tune, um, is you're jumpering this PROM out of the memcal and just basically ignoring it. And you're going to run it in a configuration like this. So basically, when you install this header into the memcal, it's going to retain the function of the knock filter and these resistor packs, but ignore the factory PROM. So when you go to install the, the adapter into the memcal, you want to skip the 14 holes on the left that would be for the factory PROM and use the pins to the right. That way, you're jumping straight into the resistor pack on the right. That way, you have proper function. If this is installed backwards, you will have issues with the car running properly. Once you have it in the holes, you just apply pressure. It'll click into place, and it's properly installed. A uh, common issue is people don't get it pressed in all the way. The car won't run properly because if, if it's not connected to this resistor pack, the car will run poorly. So when it comes time to install the new assembly into the ECM itself, it installs very similarly to the factory memcal. If you look at the bottom, the pinout is exactly the same. But the problem is the adapters don't have the alignment tabs that the factory memcals have. So what is possible is you can bend the, tab, the pins in this header. You don't want to do that. You want to be very careful. Install the chip into the ECM. It will require a little bit of uh, just you know, a little persuasion to get in there. But still be very gentle. Then you want to make sure it's on. There's a little hook here and make sure you seat it down on that and also on this side and you want to apply even downward pressure onto the chip assembly close these locking tabs in just apply a little more pressure to make sure it's seated properly and your installation is complete if you don't have a zip socket you can reinstall the dust cover if you choose um, if you run it without it it's not a big deal Leaving it off makes it easy to change in the event you have, you know, custom chips and you're changing them frequently or anything of that nature. Um, hopefully this video helps any customers I have that were looking to get this installed.